Welcome back guys to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations, where now Iris can fly in flames it seems, as Luis Desnim, Larry Butts, has painted a picture that baffles us all and questions his grounding to Earth. What me? As we're supposed to sort things out, as witness as your friend is he not? I bet he wishes he wasn't. Accessory to foolishness, Miles Edgeworth. Let us get back to the cross-examination, by force if necessary. Mr. Edgeworth, I expect you to expose the obvious contradiction here. Y yes your honour. But the people can't fly? Looks like I've got another reason to remember this moron. Well, what do you think of my debut piece? Get that thing away from me. It's too confusing. Now hurry up and cross-examine him. I'm a day's name, I'm an artist. What do you think I was doing? Sketching in front of the bridge, I was whipping up a frenzy of art. I saw Iris flying, a white hood fluttering. Oh wow, wait a second, we instantly got... We got an instant another statement, which we know is untrue because Iris did not have her white hood at that time. Great, just where do you see this sight from? Hey, no need to shout. When I was lying in bed in that rundown shack, the crack of the lightning bolt made me realise that the bridge was burning. I just watched it for a while from there, thinking how nicely it was burning. Then after about five minutes I saw it. The defendant flying? That's right! That's when I decided to go to the bridge. I see, that all makes sense. Aside from the sketch itself... Yes, this sketch doesn't make any sense. I just need to convince the artist that his work is ludicrous. Shock and awe that I was feeling, I transferred it all directly onto the page. Well, this is the point, I think, because she couldn't have been wearing a hood. It was given to Phoenix Wright. Before the lights out bell, that was 10pm. I think we've got it. Objection! And Larry, what did you really see that night? Not that I particularly care. In your position, that's just being irresponsible. I, I drew exactly what I saw. I'll give you a whole dollar that is the truth. If that is truly the case, then there is one thing that we can say for certain. What might that be? That the person who flew over the bridge could not have been the defendant, Illis. Oh, what? What do you mean? I don't understand. Wah! A foolhardy folly of a foolish statement by an equally foolishly hardly foolhardy fooly fool. How exactly can you make this claim? Tell us, Larry. According to this picture, the individual whom you say you saw was wearing a hood, correct? Of course she was! That rundown shack is quite away from the bridge. The hood is what told me that this floating angel was my iris. The hood is my darling iris and iris is my darling hood. Wah! It seems there are bigger fools in this world than the one at the defense's bench. Larry, there's something you need to be made aware of. On the night of the murder, iris wasn't wearing a hood. She had given it to Wright as a gift. Are you going to change your story now? Perhaps suggest it was Wright who took flight? We know he did, but downwards, falling with style. W what are you talking about? I think you understand what I mean just fine. Why? Why did Nick have Iris's hood? What? Edgy, what's going on with Iris and Nick? Why you Nick, you dog? I do believe that this unbelievably mysterious sketch is destined to disappear, discredited and discarded, straight into the garbage. Ha! <laughs> ah! What is it now, witness? It feels like I've been waiting 25 years for this very day to come. Edgy, today is the day I get to completely stupefy you. Wh what? What is the meaning of adverse witness? I hate to have to do this, but I have some definitive evidence. Oh, you do? Definitive? Evidence? Iris did indeed come flying over the burning bridge. And I, Larise Days Nim, shall prove it! I didn't expect to ask this again, but we shall be needing your testimony once again. Tell us anything you know concerning the defendant as depicted in this sketch and show us your evidence that this nightmare was actually a reality. Okay, I hope you're ready, Edgy. 
because I'm going to feed you a whopping serving of pain. You've been serving us a whopping serving of pain this whole time, trust me. Proof that Iris flew! Really? You can have that proof? Could just be clothes. When I reached Dusky Bridge, she was already gone. I was so worried, so I finally searched all over for her. That led to me finding a beautiful crystal sphere, half buried in the snow. Ah. I'm sure that Iris was simply wearing a spare hood. After all, no one else could have lost a crystal sphere that night. Uh, cr crystal sphere? This one. Pretty, isn't it? But fine as keepers. That sphere. Where did you find it? Let me see. Around here. Somewhere? Looks about right. And it was half buried in the snow. It had pretty much stopped snowing by then. But there was still some falling as I walked to the bridge. So yeah, that places you between 10.45 and 10.50. Hmm. The court accepts this crystal sphere. That's mine, okay? I want it back afterward. Hmm. There's something on it. Oh my. It's blood. What? Blood? But yeah, we kind of know that something happened after all. You ready, Edgy? By tomorrow morning, you'll be calling me Master Larry. Yeah, I like the sounds of that. No one's going to push me around anymore. Didn't you want to be called Larice Days and only a few minutes ago? So it's about the bloody sphere, which we know to belong to something, don't we? When I reached Dusky Bridge, she was already gone. No, let's skip forward. This. No one else could have lost a crystal sphere that night. I feel this is the statement we're presenting too. Now the question is, what are we presenting? Because we know this wasn't Iris's. It's either the staff... Or it's the picture. Which we can see, it's part of the staff. We can see that the staff itself doesn't have it now. But I think I'm presenting the picture, and I'm going straight ahead with this one. Objection! Objection! Larry. That night, there was someone. Someone who lost a crystal sphere. See? Bang on. We're there. Th there was? Who? Who was a stupid idiot? You, you, weren't you working with her? Miss Elise Days Nim, the mentor to a stupid idiot. The victim? I have a photo of her here. And on the end of her staff, you can see a familiar looking crystal sphere. H hey! That's my photograph! Give it back! Oh, ouch! A crystal sphere like that is quite easy to find. I have one just like it on my brooch. That's not a sphere. They look nothing alike. In any case, please take a look at this. This is the victim's staff, found at the scene of the crime. Ah! The crystal sphere! It's gone! What? 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 J just what does this mean? If anyone jumped or flew across the bridge that night, it certainly was not Iris. After all, she was not wearing a hood. More importantly, the crystal sphere found at the landing site was not hers either. That means the one who flew and dropped the sphere was the victim, Miss Elias Dave's Nim. Objection! A fool alongside another fool on a fool's errand to reach a foolish con conclusion. First of all, this sketch, which I prefer to call a scribble, is ridiculous. People cannot fly. Let's it is rejected. You, you can't do that. I saw it with my own two eyes. And this crystal sphere. This is nothing more than a red herring. You honestly believe that? Give it some thought, and I'm sure you'll realize it as well, Miles Edgeworth. Elise Day's Nim was in her room on the night of the murder. There was no reason for her to go to Dusky Bridge. Therefore, this sphere cannot be related to this case. That is all. Objection! Miss Francisca von Karma. The only people who will accept that explanation are scatterbrains and clowns. Why are you pointing at me? The victim's crystal sphere was found near the bridge on the night of her murder. Yet you expect us to believe this has nothing to do with the case? Objection! That crystal sphere? It was probably thrown away at the bridge after the murder. 
after the murder. There is blood on the crystal sphere, isn't there? This naturally suggests that it was thrown away after the murder took place. The killer placed it there to throw the investigation off the scent. Which is the exact same reason that he drew that ridiculous sketch. What? You mean... I'm the killer? <laughs> All joking aside, just when did this crystal sphere appear near the foot of the bridge? Unless this can be proven in some way, I refuse to believe this is related to the case. The blood? She makes a valid point. There is no evidence that Elise Days Nim left Hazako Temple that night. However, if somehow this crystal sphere can be proven to have been dropped before the victim was killed, then this case is going to transform into something else entirely. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth. I want your final opinion on the disposition of this crystal sphere. I can't really give one, to be fair. I mean, it's got blood on it. So it was with Elise at the time of the murder, but was the time of the murder? It says between 10 or 11. Basically, it could have happened earlier, then the victim could have been dropped. What could have... Well, I'm just wondering if she could have actually been legitimately launched all that distance somehow, but that's crazy enough as is, because the body fell. This is weird. If it is not related to the case, then this witness who you call will have been nothing more than a monumental waste of time. Prepare yourself for some very appropriate punishment, Miles Edgeworth. Can I prove it? That is the question. Can I prove that the Crystal Sphere was dropped before the murder took place? Yes, I can. No, it's impossible. Well, I've kind of got to prove it, haven't I, really? I can't not do it. This is just... I've got to do it. It's the only way forward. But on what basis? Can I prove it? That isn't the issue. To simply prove it, that's the only option. That's what he'd do. That's the way Phoenix Wright would do this. Your Honor, allow me to prove something to you. I will prove that this crystal sphere is a vital link to solving this case. How is part of the staff? It must have been that there at part of the time. It's bloody and stuff. You will do that? And look in your eye. You remind me of Phoenix Wright when he is cornered. I'm a bit confused now. That should come as no surprise. Because right now, I am Phoenix Wright, and I am indeed cornered. I order you to present your evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. I don't know what I'm doing unless I'm presenting it itself. Evidence that proves that the Crystal Fear was indeed dropped before the murder. I don't know. The blood? Can I present the blood? Um... Wait a second, we're proving that it happened before. What does it say itself? Found half covered in snow near Dusky Bridge, the night of the crime has blood on it. To be honest, I feel like this is the big statement, that it's part of the murder. Half covered no 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 Half covered in snow! Take that! It stopped snowing before the murder was seen. So if it's half covered in snow, then it was before the time of when it, the scene murder was, which Iris was part of. Uh, this crystal severe. It was half buried in the snow, correct? That's right. If it hadn't stopped snowing, then it would have been game over. The snow would have totally covered it. That's all I needed to hear from you, Larry. Your testimony makes one thing quite clear. Wh what? When the crystal sphere was dropped, it was snowing, even if it was ever so slightly. Snowing? On the other hand, let us look at the scene of the murder. As proven earlier today, there is no snow on the victim's body. Ah! Therefore, the crystal sphere must have been dropped before the murder. Wh what? But was bloody. Such a key thing now. Order, order, order! 
On the night of the murder, the victim did indeed go to Dusky Bridge. And there, something occurred that caused the staff's crystal sphere to come loose. What? What could that be? This sphere. There is some blood on it, isn't there? Allow me to raise a certain possibility at this junction. The real crime scene was near the foot of Dusky Bridge. Objection! You may object. The murder didn't take place in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard. Only a fool would suggest such a foolish piece of absolute foolishness. Just who is the fool? And which part is so foolish, Miss Von Karma? Have you been paying any attention this whole time, Miles Edgeworth? The sister saw everything. She saw the victim being killed by the defendant in Hazakura Temple Courtyard. Objection! That's not exactly true now, is it? To put it more precisely, what she saw was... The murder weapon being removed from the victim's body. Th that's the same thing! No, it isn't. You said it yourself. Very little blood is actually lost. At the moment of a blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood will be lost from a body, that would be when the blade is removed. If that statement is the truth, then Dusky Bridge could very easily be the scene of the murder. The murder weapon was not removed, unless there was no bleeding. Objection! You are forgetting one vital thing, Miles Edgeworth. On these days, Nim's body was found in Hazakura Temple. On foot, it takes 15 minutes to travel from Dusky Bridge to Hazakura Temple. You mean to suggest someone carried the body all that way? I've made it this far. The only place to take this is to the end. I just need to prove that my version of the events is also perfectly plausible. Now, if the defense is ready, the court would like to have an explanation. Please show us the method by which the victim's body was carried to Hazakura Temple. There was only one means to get it there fast enough. To get it within a certain amount of time and one set of tracks to prove it. Take that. On that snowy night, there is one way that a body could have been moved. The snowmobile. Ah! As we know, the snowmobile was used that night. It was explained as having been used to dispose of the murder weapon. But it could have also been used to carry a body. Order, order, order! Ah! This... This is completely unacceptable, Miles Edgeworth. You've dug yourself into your own grave! What do you mean? The only one who could have used the snowmobile was the defendant. She's the only one who could have moved the body. Doesn't that put the final nail in your coffin? Ha! Huh. You're too late, Francisca von Karma. And in fact, the defense has proven something else entirely. We have shown that this case requires further investigation. W what? Where was the victim? Elise Dave's Nim really killed. If her body was moved, whatever for? And finally! Just what does this image mean? Do you even need to think about that? Such a creature could never see the truth, let alone describe it! Objection! This witness certainly sits on one of the lowest possible branches of humanity. However, he would never utter a lie that could hurt a girl with whom he is enamoured. He drew this, so it is something that actually happened. The defence stands firm on this point. Ed edgy! Thank you! That settles it then. I cannot give a verdict under these circumstances. Right. I seem to have fulfilled my part in this. It is just as I thought. Francisca von Karma, you make a wonderful partner. Excuse me? There was one reason and one alone for me being here. To expose the darkness lurking in this case and then pass it on to right. Really? That's what this was all about? You could have just told me that from the very beginning! Then I wouldn't have had Franzi with me all ah, day! Ouch! Miles Edgeworth, I don't care about what you were here to do. This was my chance to finally grind you at my heel! A shame that your chance seems to have slipped you by. What a shame! Franzi! This is all your fault! Such a terrible witness! You are an affront to all the legal system stands for! Ow, 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 I demand satisfaction! Poor Larry. He's dead. 
I cannot believe that the witness's testimony relates to an actual event. However, there has to be some sort of answer for the questions it raises. Have his words here today been the truth or lies? And next time we gather in this courtroom, those are the matters that shall be addressed. I am counting on thorough investigations by both the defense and the prosecution. And with this, the rest is up to you, right? Court is now adjourned! And so we move on. But do we move back to Phoenix? Is he well enough to be moving around? He's reviewed the case! And Edgeworth has kept the case alive. What will happen next time on Trails and Tribulations? Bye bye